ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮದನ್ನಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಧೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ I offer my respectful obeisances to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and to all of you, because you are Vaishnavas, and therefore the most worshipable in the, in the universe. Hare Krishna. And from the beginning, Kesha Bharti Maharaj brought up about uh, hearing from Prabhupada's conversation with Brian Singer, asking if he could lead a normal life And Prabhupada advocated that if you go on hearing about Krishna, then he said, you'll become Krishna conscious, Krishna conscious immediately. And uh, Jai Dvaita Swami. Brian Singer, give him the extra mic. Push the button for him. Okay. Brian Singer is actually the founder of Rip Curl, that um, very famous surf company, surf, surfing company. Is he company. still alive? Yeah. Wow. He's still alive. Amazing. I found that instructive, that uh, Prabhupada gave that direction that to, to somebody who was inquiring, perhaps for the first time, about Krishna consciousness, and he said, You'll become Krishna conscious immediately. Stay in the process of hearing and chanting. And Jai Dvaita Maharaj told the story of how Prabhupada had admonished someone, but he did it so expertly that the person was able to imbibe what he was saying, that uh, you're a rascal. And that's quite an art to be able to do that. Uh, Urmila Prabhu talked a lot about her family, her father, and told the Prophet's qualities in relationship to her father. And when her father had asked about why you distribute food so much, Prabhupada had said, uh, do you believe in infection? And then had related how if you take prasadam, then you also get infected by Krishna's mercy. Bhir Krishna Maharaj talked about unity and diversity. And I especially liked how you said that, uh, you mentioned that when somebody is very different in, in a certain culture, they can be stoned. And then you said that the, on the social media, people get stoned also. And I think you were advocating that we should stop that. I really like that. Uh, Nirakula Devi Dasi talked about how... Um, Karandar Prabhu used to say that Hare and Krishna are the first and last words and service to Prabhupada is everything else in between. That's a digestible sandwich anyone can take. And Dhanadar Maharaj had mentioned something that really struck my attention which is about his mental stability. How is it that it's not just physical strength when might um, be grasping for at seven years old, but also mental stability. But Prabhupada went it alone all the way to the West and went everywhere and had to deal with many immature students, but he had the mental stability to deal with it, which was one of his glories. Isn't that what you said? And Sachinanda Maharaj had mentioned how uh, memorable point out of many about the ants on a dark stone. Just relating your experience of chanting and feeling insignificant and how poetical you were when you talked about being an ant on a dark stone in a dark dismal night in abject ignorance. And how from starting from there uh, one can one can perhaps begin to perceive Prabhupada's mercy and the mercy of the Holy Name, you also said that uh, regret leads to mercy. That was definitely impressive. And Burjana Prabhu had talked about, I really like the analogy of husband and wife 
it's your fault. And then realizing later, oh, I did it. It was a, it's a stark realization to have been, have been blaming Krishna for uh, countless lifetimes and then realize that I did it to myself and that I'm the one moving things around extremely um, powerful. Havi Prabhu, in hearing your story, I recalled the days of complete surrender when devotees simply immersed themselves in the mood of spreading the Sankirtan movement, following in Srila Prabhupada's footsteps, eager to take on any challenge. And I was feeling so much admiration for you. And then, by association, all the God brothers and God sisters, and all the other devotees, all of you, who have dedicated your lives to pushing on the Krishna consciousness movement, as Divyanga Prabhu said, going upstream against the powerful currents of ignorance in the world and people's reluctance to take to Krishna consciousness. And thank you, Divyanga, for bringing the mood of being very personal and vulnerable and uh, appreciating the, uh, the gift of Krishna consciousness, which you've taken advantage of throughout your whole life. I thought about um, a, a routine that a, a comedian did once that I thought was really funny. His name was Stephen Wright, and he said, I heard that you don't know what you got till it's gone, so I, I gave away everything I had to, s to see what I actually had. And then I thought the, of the reality of that. Oftentimes, I take for granted everything that I do have until it's gone. And then I have to really look and see, you know, what did I have? becomes a, a revelation that I had so much before. And when Srila Prabhupada leaves, this is called the Tirubhava. And there's a way in which through his energy and enthusiasm I felt carried along by Prabhupada after he left as did many everyone realized that that energy may not be available in the same way it was as uh, Urmila Prabhu was saying she wished Prabhupada was right there speaking could answer the questions and solve the particular problems that had come to bear. But w once, once the guru leaves and once Srila Prabhupada leaves, left particularly, then there's an opportunity to see actually what did he give us. And then it becomes my responsibility to find out what of all the things that he gave us are, uh, are my responsibility to take up and what ways can I use them. And that's um, an eternal occupation because it's unlimited what Prabhupada gave us. I like to boil things down to the practical. So I'm going to read you just four simple things, uh, teachings about chanting the holy name that Prabhupada gave us that uh, we've been uh, churning over the last several days, we've been having a Joppa circle upstairs after Mangalartik, sitting together, and at intervals we stop and discuss uh, why we're chanting in the first place. What are we doing here? And these are four very popular, popular amongst our Joppa circle so far, teachings that Prabhupada gave. And I'm giving these as an example that I just took a little cup and skimmed the surface of the Veda base and, and found these. Uh, almost by accident. But I propose that Prabhupada left so much, it's an ocean. Uh, uh, we just finished the Krishna book the other day. We read all 90 chapters in about 10 days, I think. And after we finished, uh, my experience was, it was like a nuclear um, explosion. Like, what is the? Where's this book been all my life? Uh, I have to read it. And once I read it, and if you take the time to read it cover to cover in 10 days, you realize what it is. It's the spiritual world in 
in a little uh, weaponized form that can go out into, <laughs> into the world and enter into anywhere. So uh, this is uh, in the spirit of, I don't know what I, you never know what you've got till it's gone. And let's see. These are a few gems to take home. Prabhupada, in 1968, said, the yoga system is approved, but nobody can follow the rules and regulations strictly. Neither there is suitable place for executing it, and everyone is always full of anxiety, so how they can concentrate. So best thing is to chant Hare Krishna, which is forced meditation. Forced meditation. Everyone please say forced meditation. forced meditation. That's one gem to take away, forced meditation. And just remember, Prabhupada's saying it's impossible to do meditation in this age. We've heard it a million times that people still try. But try forced meditation for a change. The second is from 16 June 1969. Prabhupada says in a letter, regarding your last question about the ecstatic symptoms of chanting Hare Krishna, you should know that the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra has an equal effect upon all devotees. Just like the sunshine has an equal effect on everyone, but when it is covered, the sunshine has a different effect. Similarly, the influence of the Hare Krishna Mantra becomes manifest when one is no longer covered by the ten offenses to chanting. The more we become free from the ten offenses, the more the effect of chanting becomes manifested through us. Everyone can become a great devotee, being freed from the offenses 100%, simply by one's determination and effort. Did you like that one? Four people loved it. There's two more. Would you like to hear them? The next one is Srila Prabhupada's letter to Jagadish in 1970. When we chant, we must concentrate our mind on the sound vibration, and in that way, everything will be revealed one after another. The form, the qualities, pastimes, etc. of the Lord, and this is the way of cultivating spiritual realization. Finally, a letter to Mohanananda, February 27, 1972. The best remedy is to sit down very tightly and chant Hare Krishna very loudly and hear for a long time until he feels himself one-minded and fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. I feel a little successful in reading these because I see Sachi Nandamara furiously writing over there. So... Uh, sit down for a long time and uh, until one becomes uh, one-minded and fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. These are uh, practicable instructions. Anyone can take these. And there are, there are hundreds more, millions more instructions that Prabhupada left. The influence of one pure devotee on the planet is inestimable. And we can judge that by the quality of instructions that he left behind as a gift for, for everybody in the world. And if one takes them, then one also becomes fortunate by following in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada and can attain complete success in life. We've uh, gathered in what's, according to Shastra, the most holy place here at Govardhan, just a few miles away from Radhakund. We've tried our best to glorify Srila Prabhupada. Birds fly in the sky as high as they're able. The sky's unlimited, but everyone does their best. And I found it to be a thrilling experience to hear from the various devotees. I did feel disappointed that we couldn't hear from everybody, because although we heard mostly from Prabhupada's disciples, today I find it most edifying to bring up a variety of devotees from various generations and including people who just walked in the door. Because there you also see that everybody's getting something and it's real. And we didn't have time to do that today, but we do have time to do that, hopefully, uh, going forward in our lives. 
and take full advantage of, of this gift that Srila Prabhupada has given us. So now we're going to have uh, a Pushpabhi Sheikh, as is the uh, uh, tradition on the Tirobhav, which means that we're going to distribute flowers to everybody. We'll all stand up in an arc around Srila Prabhupada and we'll sing the Mangala Charna. Uh, uh, someone will uh, speak it and then we can re repeat it and then we'll offer three times in our obeisances to Srila Prabhupada. Just after that, we'll have an Artik, a Guru Puja, and just after that, there will be Krishna Prashadam for everybody in the universe. So bring your friends on down here. Thank you very, very much. Gaur Premanande Haribo. Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman, hey, Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman, Natchari Armarman.